Thank you, man. I'm excited today to be in church. I don't know about you. I was, uh, last week we had one of my best friends, Cooper. He spoke a great word for us last Sunday morning. And then that night, we actually drove from Edmonton. We went to Calgary and I spoke at his church uh, Sunday night. And then we were in Calgary all week in meetings and speaking. But I'm just excited to be back home right here in Edmonton at our church. It's just a beautiful church. You know, Beth and I, we've only been here for a few months, but we are just falling in love with you. We're falling in love with this church. We're falling in love with this city. And so we just, just even right now, Beth and I just want to say thank you for welcoming us to be a part of this family, to be a part of this church. We're so excited for what God has for our future. You know, and we know that, you know, transition is always difficult, but again, Beth and I are just so grateful for you and welcoming us. And we're excited. Again, God has, I think, you know, what we're feeling and from the, the conversation I'm having with other pastors, we're feeling that God is doing something new this year. And this is not just in our church, this is just across Canada that the revival, we're on the brink of revival. And if you're like, I don't know what revival is, what revival is, is reviving dead things, bringing dead things back to life and just seeing people come into relationship with Jesus. And I'm excited for what's going to happen. You know, we have some big plans for September. We're going to start getting into a little bit in the future, but we're excited for what God is going to do. It's going to be amazing. And again, if you're new, you don't know me, uh, my name is Dustin. I'm the lead pastor here at Victory Church on the Rock. And today, we're starting this brand new conversation, this brand new series called The Human Connection. And, you know, what, one thing we've noticed, I think, all of us over this past year is one of the biggest things that's been under attack for us is connection with other human beings. You know, this has been a year filled with restriction. It's been a year, a year and a half filled with masks, filled with social distancing, filled with so many things that have caused a break in human connection. Now, I'm sure all of us, if not all of us, most of us have had a relationship or some relational issues this year. You know, I hear story after story of marriages that are on the brink of disaster. I've heard stories of friendships, like lifelong friendships that were broken this year because of a disagreement or different opinion. This has been a year that has been so hard for us relationally. You know, some of us, maybe our, our, our parents, our, our grandparents are, are living in homes and we've barely even been able to see them. You know, this year has been hard when it comes to relationships. I think we've all felt it. I think all of us are continuing to experience it. And then one thing I also notice is that obviously what we're being told is that by the end of this month, Alberta is going to be fully open. And so what's happening, it's exciting. It's so exciting. But I also do think that when Alberta fully opens, there's going to be a lot of emotions that stir up within us that we're not expecting. I think for some of us, it's going to be really, really hard to reconnect because we're so, there's been so much over a year and a half that's become habit for us that is no longer going to need to be habit. And it's going to be really hard, I think, for some of us to engage again and have human connection because we're not even, some of us, even used to other human contact. You know, this year, my wife and I, Beth, we had our baby, right? She's 11 months old. She's turning a year old next month, which blows my mind. But I'm telling you, this was probably... This is my first baby, but this is probably the hardest space for us to have a baby in. You know, within the first, I think, three months, I think that my baby met maybe 15 people. You know, like, and the people she met most of the time, she only saw their eyes. You know, and, and, and you know, my, my, we, my, my wife gave birth. I didn't give birth. My wife gave birth. But we didn't feel a lot of support. You know, the people that we thought maybe would be able to be there couldn't be there. You know, Beth and I, we, 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 we saw all these restrictions and we saw so much broken relationship just because people we thought would be there for us couldn't be there. Sometimes it was because of a choice or whatever, but the support that we wish we had gotten wasn't there. And it was hard. Like, it was extremely difficult. And then in the midst of all of this, again, my wife and I, we, we felt God calling us to move to Edmonton in January and so we literally left our house our friends our church and we just said okay God we trust you we're going to Edmonton we're so excited but even there we we you know we were back in Calgary and we just even in Calgary started to notice some of the relationships that to be honest I think out of COVID aren't going to exist anymore you know the human connection is so important for us as humans yet at the same time this year has made it so difficult to actually connect with other human beings. And I just want to encourage all of us that we are all in different spaces when it comes to reopening. 
And what I want to encourage all of us to do is to be patient with people, to be full of grace with people, to be full of love with people, and to just love people despite what they believe about reopening. Because there's going to be a lot of opinion. For some people, it's going to be extremely hard. For those of us maybe we're introverts, this year has been awesome. We haven't had to talk to one other human being all year. The only conversation we have is on Zoom. But I want to encourage you, this is a year, and, and, and we're excited for connection. But again, I want to encourage you, let's be patient, let's be loving, let's be full of grace as we have conversations with people who might believe different, who might think different, who might even not even agree with reopening or think that we should have reopened six months ago. There's different opinion, but let's just be full of grace, full of love, and full of patience. You know, because human connection is under attack. And if we go back to the beginning of humanity, we can see the importance of human connection. We're going to go all the way back to the first book in the Bible, Genesis, and it says this, Genesis 2 verse 18. Then the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. I will make a helper who's just right for him. This is interesting because Adam, the first human, he's sitting there and he feels lonely even though he doesn't even know what it's like to have human relationship. He's sitting there and he doesn't even know what it's like to have a conversation with another human being. Obviously, he has deep relationship with God and it's a beautiful space, but God looks and says it's not good for man to be alone. And today I have three thoughts when it comes to human connection. And my number one thought today is this, is that we were created for connection. And at the beginning of time, we were created for connection. When God created Adam, he had perfect relationship with the Father. He had perfect relationship, perfect connection to the Father. And then as he's walking in the garden, he starts to notice, I'm lonely. It's not good for man to be alone. And I don't know if you've ever been surrounded by people but felt fully alone. I don't know if you've ever had a moment like that. But my wife and I, we, we like to go to vacation in, in Phoenix because it's warm. There's scorpions there and snakes and stuff, but we just, like, try and avoid them. But, like, we try and get somewhere warm. And, you know, I'm, a, I'm an incredible husband, right? So what happened was is uh, to make it cheaper to fly, we decided we would fly separately. And, if, again, I'm incredible. So what I did is I took the worst flight. I was like, look at me. So my flight home, I literally had to get to the airport. I think it was two and a half hours before my flight because best flight was earlier. And then I had a flight to San Francisco. And then I had a five-hour layover in San Francisco. And then, I, and then I flew from San Francisco to Calgary. I think my travel time to, for like a five-hour flight, six-hour flight, ended up being like 17 hours or something ridiculous. And I remember I was sitting in the San Francisco airport probably six hours, seven hours, eight hours into my travel day. I was sitting in my terminal, surrounded by people, but I felt so desperately alone. I felt so desperately alone. Even though I was surrounded by people, I felt so alone. I felt so lost. And I was surrounded by people. I don't know if you've ever had a moment like that, where you're surrounded by people, but you still feel so lonely. You just feel so lost. You, feel, you just feel so broken. And you're surrounded by people. Because we were created for relationship. We were actually created for human connection. We were created for friendship. We were created to have relationship with other human beings. We were created for it. And this year, again, this has become, I think, even more prominent in our life. I think at least a lot of us, some of us, we've realized this year how deep our need for human connection really is. How, how deep we desperately are looking for relationship with people. And this year, the people that we thought we were close with, we realized this year we weren't actually that close with them. We realized that some of our relationships were superficial. We realized that some of our relationships weren't going to last something like this. And we're sitting here close to the end and we're reflecting, at least me, I'm reflecting on this past year and a half and realizing how broken some of these relationships are. How lonely I think we felt this year. How lost I think we felt this year. And maybe we haven't spent the time to reflect on it, but I think for a lot of us this year has been so, so, so hard. And some of us we're going to struggle when it comes to reconnecting because we're so used to isolation. We're so used to being alone. That's going to be hard for us to reconnect because we are watching church from home. We're working from home. 
we're shopping from home, we're ordering skip the dishes from home, we're doing everything from home. And so for us to actually enter back into connection, for some of us it's going to be really, really, really difficult. Because if we know that if we saw people, they would look at us and realize we're not okay. We, we, we know that if, if we stepped into a, to a space where someone actually saw us, noticed us, they would realize we're actually not okay. And so what, we're, what some of us are going to do, we're going to try as hard as we can to stop, to not connect. You know, Genesis 2 verse 19 to 20 says this, So the Lord God formed the ground, all the wild animals, all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Incredible job. And the man chose a name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals, but there was still no helper just right for him. And Adam, I'm telling you, he gets one of the most incredible jobs. He gets to name every animal. Like, I'm thinking about that. That's one of the more creative jobs in the history of humanity. Naming all the animals, right? He's looking, he sees this big thing, and he goes, that's an elephant for sure. Right? And then he sees this, like, this, like, animal with a long neck. He's like, giraffe. You know, and then he sees a platypus, and he's like, whoa, what is that? It's like a duck, kind of. I'm going to call that platypus. But then I think, I don't know what happened, but then he's just like, cat, rat, bat. You know, like, he just got, I don't know if he got lazy. And then, like, dog, frog. It's like, he kind of ran out of the creative juice maybe near the end. He had this incredible job, and Adam needed human connection before he realized he needed it. Because at the end of it, it says, and all the wild animals, there was still no helper just for right for him. In all of creation, there's nothing perfect for Adam except for another human being that he didn't even realize he needed yet. He had one of the best jobs in, on the planet and a great relationship with God, but something was still missing. I think some of us, we, we think that our relationship with God is going to be good enough. And I think, yeah, of course, like have deep relationship with him. But part of how we grow as people, part of how, how we grow as Christians is by getting around other people. By getting around people who are going to lead us into the things that God has for us. The people who are going to encourage us when things are hard. The people who are going to sit there with us when we're sick in the hospital. We need to have people around us. We were created for connection. Something was missing. And what was missing was human connection. And the question I have for us today is that are you missing human connection right now? Do you have enough human connection in your life? Do you actually have people that you talk to on the daily basis, on the weekly basis, on the monthly basis? Do you have people that you connect with on a deep, real level? Because it's so hard to connect deeply with people. It is. But it's absolutely necessary for human life. It's human connection. This year has led us to isolation. And I believe that right now more than ever we need to pursue connection. It's time for us as the province opens to step out of isolation and step into connection. That's what God has for us this next year. God has something big for us this year. Genesis 2, 24 to 25. It says this, and this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. If we go back to the original concept for connection there was not supposed to be shame and you know what the cure to shame is the cure to shame is vulnerability i'm telling you adam and eve buck naked in the in the garden that is a vulnerable place to be but they felt no shame so the thought too today is that we were created for vulnerability we were created to have people see us for who we really are. We were created for people to see the broken parts. We were, we were created to, to, for people to see the hard parts, the parts that we don't like. We were created to be seen, yet one of our biggest fears as humanity is to be seen. You know, the first thing when, when sin entered the world and they ate the fruit and, and sin entered, the first thing they felt was shame. The first thing they felt was, I'm naked. The first thing they felt was, people are going to see me for who I really am, and that's not okay. 
We were created for perfect connection through vulnerability. Yet right now we're living in a space where we don't want to be vulnerable. We do not want people to know who we really are. You know, it's like at this time, like Adam and Eve, no matter what they thought, no matter who they, what they were thinking, they could see that. Like I'm, I'm telling you, if you guys could see every one of my thoughts, it wouldn't be a good, good scenario for any of us. Right? Like, I'm telling you, I, I don't see your thoughts either, right? I don't see your thoughts. Like, the other day, Beth was telling me a story how she almost got cut off on the highway. And I'm telling you, the thoughts that both of them probably had were not appropriate. <laughs> because we are trying to hide everything. We try and hide everything. We try and hide the most deep-rooted pain in our life because we do not want people to notice us. We do not want people to see us. The world is filled with shame and a break in vulnerability has taken place. We're not vulnerable anymore. We're trying to cover ourselves up. We do whatever it takes to cover up the wounds. We do whatever it takes to cover up, to hide ourselves from other people. And when God says, hey, that's not what I created you for. I didn't create you to be broken. I didn't create you to hide yourself. I created you to be seen. I created you to be known. I created you so that we could have deep human connection. We're all desperate for human connection and vulnerability, but shame has taken over. Shame from our past, shame from our decisions, shame from our thoughts, shame. Because shame destroys you, but vulnerability restores you. Shame will destroy you. It will destroy the very nature of who you are. It will destroy you. But vulnerability restores you. Vulnerability brings healing. Vulnerability brings love. Vulnerability brings joy. And when we look at vulnerability, we do not see it as a good thing. We do not see it as a good thing where, where, where we just feel like we're going to be seen and noticed. You know, Genesis 3 Verse, uh, verse 6 to 10 says this. The woman was convinced and she saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it and then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment their eyes were open and suddenly, and suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden, so they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. This moment, the first thing, the first thing felt after sin enters is shame, feeling I can't be seen anymore. How many times do we try and hide ourselves from each other? How many times do we even try and hide ourselves from God? We, we say, oh, God's, God's coming, God's around. I got to go hide. I got to go cover up. I got to go do this, this thing to make myself feel better. When God is just saying, I, where are you? I just want to see you. I want a relationship with you. I already know what you're going through. I already know the pain. I already know what you're trying to hide. Why are you running away from me? Yeah, we always just run away. Adam and Eve, they ran away. They ran away from each other. They ran away from God. They tried to hide themselves because they were feeling so much shame. Vulnerability was broken. Vulnerability has been under attack since the beginning because vulnerability leads to deeper connection. There's this author, her name is Brene Brown, and this is how she describes vulnerability. Uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure, but vulnerability is not weakness. It's our most accurate measure of courage. You know what takes courage? Being real with somebody. You know what takes courage? Sharing with somebody what's going on in your life. Do you know what takes courage? It's telling somebody when they've hurt you. Do you know what takes courage? Is, is stepping out and being courageous and saying, hey, I need help. We struggle. We struggle even asking for help. It takes courage to be vulnerable. It takes more courage to be vulnerable than it does to run away. For some of us running away, that's what we've been doing our whole life. We've been running away. Pain comes, we run away. Trauma gets brought up, we run away. Rather than pursue. 
If you want to bring healing in your deepest, darkest moment, vulnerability is going to be so important. Because we need to start being real with people. We need to stop isolating ourselves. Because vulnerability is courage. It takes courage to be vulnerable. We will never be close with people that we don't know. And I think that's partially why this year when I reflect, I realize how some of my relationships were so superficial because I didn't actually know them. I didn't actually have a moment where we were vulnerable with each other, where we actually shared in life experiences. The, the conversations were always about something else rather than how we're really doing. It's so easy to say, hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm just doing awesome. It's the greatest week of my life when it's literally been so bad. You know, we're, we've gotten so good at pretending we're okay. We've gotten so good at saying we're okay, saying that everything is awesome. But I think it's time for us to stop pretending we're okay and start being real with where we're actually at. If you're not doing okay, that's okay. It's like it's okay to not be okay. It's okay if there's something going on. It's okay if you're struggling. It's okay if you're feeling broken. But it's not okay to experience that by yourself. That's where you're going to get into trouble. That's where you're going to find that, that, that you're not actually going to end up being okay because you're not actually bringing it to people who can be there to encourage you, to love you, to share with you, to be there for you in the hardest, darkest moment. Genesis 3, 11 to 13. This is God. He says, who told you that you were naked? You're not supposed to know that. Who told you that you were naked, the Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, it was the woman you gave me. <laughs> Hilarious. It was the woman's fault. You gave me, who gave me that fruit and I ate it. And then the Lord God asked the woman. He's like, okay, let's go down the line. What have you done? She says, the serpent deceived me. That's why I ate it. Does this remind you? This scenario reminds you of anything. It reminds me of us as humans. We are so easy to point the finger when there's something wrong. When there's, there's relational issues, you're so easy to point the finger rather than look internally. Right? She, he goes to the man, why are, you why are you naked? That's not the question he said. He said, how do you know you're naked? He said, oh, it's the woman's fault. He goes to the woman, okay, it's your fault. She says, no. It's the serpent's fault. How often do we just point the finger when a relationship is broken? We're not feeling relationally charged. We, 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 we feel that we're just going to blame somebody else. You know, in stories and in counseling sessions and in moments where I've had married, people married come to me, oftentimes they blame each other for their relational broken issues. Right? They're always saying, hey, this is what they do. This is what he does. This is what she does. And this is why it's, we're not okay. And this is what they did. It's their fault. It's her fault. It's the serpent's fault. My, th my third thought today is that we're created for accountability. We always blame someone else when we're not feeling connected. We're all, we always blame somebody else. We blame whatever it is. Maybe we blame what happened to us when we were a kid. Or we, or we, or we blame our, 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 our spouse. Or we blame our kids. Or we blame our boss. Or we blame our pastor. Whatever it is. Rather than actually taking a moment to just look internally. You know, if only they really cared about me. If only they, they if only, the, why didn't they call me during all of COVID? Why didn't they call me? Why didn't they even send me a text? Don't they know how hard this year has been for me? Don't they know how hard COVID has been for me? Don't they know? It's time to become accountable for our own human connection. It's so easy for us to, for, for some of us to be alone and wish we weren't, right? When something hard happens, a lot of us, we sit back and we just hope that somebody will reach out to us. We, we hope that somebody, and, and obviously I hope so too. I hope that when something goes on in your life that, that we reach out to you, but I can't guarantee every time that we're going to do that. Because we don't know. And, and, and it's, it's up to us as individuals to be accountable and say, hey, I'm not okay. To actually go to, to somebody who's hurt you and say, I'm not okay because of this. And that takes courage. That takes vulnerability. That takes it and we're becoming accountable for what we've gone through. It's so easy 
for us to blame. As we step out of this COVID season and into the new season that God has for us, it's time to step into deep relationship with other people. To reconnect with humanity. People we haven't connected with in a long time. People who need connection. Now I just want to be vulnerable. We're talking about vulnerability. I'm going to invite Martin to come up too in the team. But you know, for us, Beth and I, to be honest, there's been some struggles with us coming here, of course. We, I shared a little bit earlier, struggling to feel connected. You know, my, I grew up, I was in one church my entire life. I was dedicated as a baby. I was baptized. You know, that was like my home. Like I knew everything. I knew where everything was. I knew everybody's name. And obviously coming here, it, it, it's a reconnection. It's like coming home to a, a different family. And again, we're so excited, but we, leave, we, 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 we left so much be, uh, during COVID, during a time where we were already feeling disconnected into a brand new space. And we so desperately want to connect with you as individuals. We so desperately do. And I know maybe you've been feeling it. Maybe I've been feeling it. Maybe you're feeling like you can't connect with us. I'm telling you, it, it has been hard. Like, I, I'm not going to pretend it's not. It has been a challenge. You know, because I know that you probably want to connect with me, and I want to connect with you, but it feels like sometimes there's just something that can get in the way, and we just don't feel like we're connecting. And I want to just, uh, from, from Beth and I's hearts, we want you to know that we are sorry if we haven't connected with you in the way that you wish we had. I want you to know that, like, if we haven't connected with you in the way that you wish we had, I'm sorry. And you know, Beth and I, we're coming here and we want to connect with you and we're going to continue to want to connect with you and we're going to do our best to to be able to connect with each of you in a deep and real way. We want you to know that from the bottom of our heart. We want to connect with you. Because we do love you. We're excited for what God is going to do. We're excited for Alberta to open so that we can get to know each other better and get to know each other deeper. We are so excited. And one of my plans is we, I just want to have a party somewhere where we just like eat a lot of food. We get to know each other. We don't have to wear masks anymore. We can have a potluck. We can eat delicious food. We can connect. We can laugh. We can cry. We can celebrate what God is doing, what God has done. I'm excited for it. God is doing something new. I hear, keep hearing people say, you know, I just want to go back to normal. I just want to go back to normal. I, you know what? I don't think we're going back to normal. I think we're going into something new. I think we're going into something extraordinary. You know, what was taken away from us, I don't think was normal. I think what was taken away from us was extraordinary. And I'm excited to step back into extraordinary. We're not going back to normal. I don't want to go back to normal. I want to go into the new that God has for us, the promised land that God has for us, the harvest that God has for us. That's where we're going. I don't want to go back to normal. I'm excited for what God is going to do in our lives, in our church, in our families. I am so excited. Beth and I, we're so excited. God is doing something new, and I'm excited to be a part of it. The human connection requires having nothing, nothing hidden. The human connection requires having nothing hidden. Freedom comes through vulnerability. If we want to be free from our past, we need to be vulnerable. If we want to, if we want to step into deeper connection, we need to start being real with people. If you're struggling, let us know so we can pray together, so we can celebrate together, so we can know God is going to do something big in our lives. He's going to. The season we're heading into, I'm not going to pretend it's going to be easy. It might be hard. And sometimes in life we think hard is bad, but hard is not always bad. Hard is means something good is on the other side. In any trial, there's, a, there's something bigger on the other side. There's a blessing on the other end of every trial. And I know that right now, it might be, we might feel like we're in a trial, but the blessing is coming. The blessing is around the corner. The blessing is in front of us. The province is opening up, and this means that we as individuals will need to open up about how, how hard this past year has been. You know, it's been hard. We've been looking for human connection in the wrong places and finding shame and loneliness in this place. I did some research this week. You know, traffic to some of the biggest pornography sites this year went up by 11 to 24%, depending on the country. 11%. 
You know, the average age that, that, that people uh, see pornography for the first time is sometimes six years old. We're looking for connection in the wrong place. We've been so alone, we're looking everywhere else to find connection and we're not finding it. There's a study that happened in, in the United States. They say one in five people this past year experienced some sort of symptom of depression. If we look at that, that means there's a lot of us in this room who are struggling with depression right now in this moment. And we haven't been able to find healing. We haven't been able to find connection. I believe with all my heart that God is bringing healing in this place right now. That God is restoring homes right now in this place. God is restoring marriages, restoring finances, restoring you as an individual. That this year is going to be the most connected we've ever been. Because we're stepping out and saying we need it more than ever. God is doing something new in this place. I'm so excited about it. And we as a church, we're going to do whatever we can to facilitate connection. And we have plans to launch connect groups this, this fall or maybe in the new year. We don't know exactly when. But if you're interested in running a connect group, a small group, a life group, uh, let us know. Let, email me, Dustin at VictoryRock.org. We want to start launching groups. I believe that God is going to bring so much love and joy and restoration into our, into our homes, into our lives, that it's going to be undeniable. People are going to start to see restoration happening here in our city and be excited about coming here, even if they've never one time stepped foot in the church. I'm excited. So if you want to connect, if, if you want to lead a connect group, email me, Dustin at VictoryRock.org. We're going to launch some connect groups. We're going to get connected. We're going to eat food. We're going to give each other hugs, and it's going to be amazing. I'm excited. I was going to pray for us, and then I have one announcement, and then uh, we're, the team's going to lead us in one last song. God, I thank you that you're doing something new. God, I thank you that we're not going back to normal. We're going into the extraordinary. We're going into the miracle. We're stepping into the blessing. That the trial has been hard, that means the blessing is going to be big. God, I pray that we as a church, we will reconnect. We will learn to connect in deeper, bigger, broader ways. And God, I thank you that something new is coming in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you that you are restoring our houses, restoring our lives, restoring our marriages, finances, whatever it is. God, we love you and we're grateful for you. In Jesus' name, amen. One thing I just really want to announce real quick, and the team's going to lead us to the song, is that next week is Father's Day, which is amazing. So I want to encourage you guys to come out next week. We have a special service plan. We have a gift for all you men out there. It's going to be great. So come on out this, this Sunday, 10 a.m. Celebrate Father's Day with us. It's going to be amazing. So we love you. Let's sing this song with the team.